Ashante, how is everybody? We're here for our weekly Oracle Manifestation reading. Checking in over the next seven or eight days or so to see where we need to direct our energy and focus in order to move our manif manifestations along and, you know, how to pursue our goals and dreams and how to communicate effectively because I feel like <laughs> I can't do that right now. So we had one card come up already. Let's see what it was. Make a wish. I love this. This deck is out of print. It's the Magical Mermaids uh, and Dolphins Manifestation Oracle deck. It's specifically aimed at speaking to your goals and your dreams and your manifestations. So our first card out is make a wish. This is a magical moment. Make a wish and enjoy its manifestation. Ooh, you know, I hope that this video uploads smoothly tonight. My last one yesterday took all night and it didn't get, uh, it didn't finish uploading until like into the morning, into the midday. But tonight is Shavuot, which marks the day that, uh, or the window in time when God, um, appeared to Moses on Mount Sinai, or he spoke to Moses. He gave Moses the Ten Commandments. And um, so we are like open, like we have a connection to this open window in time where we're connecting to the energy of like God coming down and making himself manifest on Mount Sinai. And this opens us up to incredible energy and miracles and um, all kinds of things. It can really shift our consciousness. It can really bring forward a drastic change or a healing or, or an insight or a revelation. But this energy is like the, there was a period of time after this energy was experienced the uh, Israelites were exposed to this energy where there was like no death and no illness. And like, if people were missing limbs, they would just regrow the limb and it was miraculous. And so if time is an illusion and all of these sort of time periods and lifetimes are all happening simultaneously, then by following that train of thought, which is like, it, this is a, 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 a physics idea, really. It's like string theory, right? That we have multiple realities and they're all going on at the same time. Past, present, future, it's all an illusion. It's all happening now. Time isn't really linear. And so the Kabbalists and the sages of old, of ancient days, they knew this, these, these like quantum physics facts, like on an intuitive level, like they, they knew that's how the universe worked. They just didn't have the language and the proof. But so on some, in some dimension somewhere right now, um, tonight, Moses is connecting with God on Mount Sinai and there's all this miraculous energy available to us. So the the exercise of the night it's suggested is to stay up all night and connect with this energy and study Torah and Bible and uh, Zohar and any kind of like scripture and just connect with that, that positive energy and be in the most positive uh, mindset that you can be in and try to adopt the creator's consciousness and try to have affinity with the light of the creator tonight. And by doing that, we set ourselves up for miracles and blessings. And this is like this potent level of energy that we're not exposed to at other times of the year. So it's very, very special, very special night. So if you can stay up late, that'd be great. And if you want to like live stream, the Kabbalah Center is doing a live stream tonight. You can find it through like, if you go to their website, create an account for yourself and go to like events and holidays, it'll probably be listed. And then you can stream it. It's probably pay what, pay what you want, pay what you can. Uh, but yeah, so that energy is happening tonight. I'm trying to think if there's, I feel like there was something else I wanted to say about it. 
Um, one of the journal exercises that one of my Kabbalah teachers had su suggested was tonight do an evaluation of where your ego lies to you. Where are you feeling trapped? Like you're backed against a wall. Like you have no other choice. I have no other choice but to do this. Like where are you instead of being in cause consciousness and creator consciousness, where are you suddenly the effect? Is there like a situation that's playing out where all of a sudden, like you could adopt a different mindset about it? For instance, my teacher literally gave this example. Um, she was talking about a woman that she knew who had like an aging parent that she was taking care of and her sibling, her brother was like too busy and had like a lot going on with like work and family and wasn't making it a priority. And in her mind and in her words, she was like, yeah, this is just not a priority for him. So all of it falls on me and I have to be the one to do all this and I'm carrying all the burden and all this stuff. And so with in, in talking at this out with her teacher and workshopping it they were able to pinpoint that like her consciousness was she was now not the cause she was the effect she was being affected by this whole situation she was being put upon and victimized and she didn't have a choice you know there was no choice there was nobody else it was her nothing right she was like not even willing to try to see what happened if she had like set a boundary and been like no i need to take this night off or to doing this and I won't be able to show up this time or whatever. So talking with the teacher, they were, she was learning that because she was feeling victimized in the situation, like, oh, it has to be me. There's no other choice that that was like the opponent having control over her and binding her in this mentality that put her in effect consciousness which essentially caused her to fall out of affinity with the light of the creator, perpetuating more chaos and negativity. So she decided to shift her thinking and go into it with a, like an attitude of, oh, I want to do this. I am excited to do this. This is my choice. I'm doing this to spend time with my mother and to share, and we're going to make the most of this, you know, event. And after she switched her thinking, it was like after that, suddenly her brother was like available to go to the grocery store and take her mom to the appointment. And it was just like everything shifted and it wasn't even the same problems anymore. It was like all of a sudden the brother was suddenly more available. And it was like the whole thing was just playing out to like the universe was just answering her belief. It was like she believed in her mind I'm the only one that can do this. It's gonna, it's, it falls all on me. I'm the one who takes care of her. And the universe is like, okay, if that's what you say, then I guess we're gonna make your brother selfish and busy and he can't help because you, you're, there's no other way, right? We have to reflect your truth back to you. You are, you know, creating this projection from your subconscious, right? So we've got to deliver what you believe. So here's your brother, he's gonna be lazy. And as soon as she shifted to her belief, the universe was like, oh, finally, we've been wanting to give you help. Like here, you know, here's your brother. He's going to help you now. That's how the universe works. It's like we get into these, we find ourselves in these little soap opera episodes, right? And they're only playing out so that they can show us, they can mirror back to us our wrong beliefs, where we miss the mark, where we're off path, where we've just like gotten it just a tick off right? And if we can be aware of that, and if we can see when, when the universe is trying to show us these things in a mirror, if we can recognize it, and it's like, oh my gosh, I can see this now. Now I can observe it. I can own it. I can, I can look at this and I can choose to think differently. I can choose to perceive this differently. And lo and behold, it was like once she shifted her belief and really understood and like was like, oh, I don't want to really think that way anymore. It was like there was no more need for that soap opera to play out. The simulation was over. It was like, oh, okay, great. Lesson learned. You've got your coin. You've got your token, your talisman from this lesson. Great. On to the next. Like on to the next level in the game. 
This doesn't need to keep playing out. The scenario has no more value or use to you anymore. So make a wish. Uh, how did we get off on this tangent? Oh yes, that this is Chevaiot. So we have the like opportunity for our prayers to be answered and our dreams to come true and to actually start to shift onto that higher destiny, that higher timeline. But it's going to be proportionate to how much we can transform our own darkness, right? I mean, not like we're not transforming it ourselves. We're, we're having the help of our, like Holy Spirit. We're praying to God. We're praying for Christ's help. We're praying for angelic help and guidance through this, right? We're, we're trying to connect to our higher self to lead us and guide us and, and give us the example of what our behavior, what our mindset would be like if we were in that completely healed and balanced and redeemed space where we've integrated the awakening fully, right? So... As you are doing the inner work tonight, if you get a chance, and you can kind of, this this energy is going to be with us through Thursday, and then it's going to significantly drop off, but it will still be available. Like, it'll, we're in this space until sh uh, Shabbat Saturday night, but the most potent energy is tonight, Tuesday night. It'll be lingering around through Thursday, but Thursday it's really going to start dissipating and dropping off. So it's going to start dissipating a little bit after tonight, but then it's going to be gradual, but then it's like it's still going to be here, but it's going to be really waning after Thursday. So connect to this energy. Do the self-searching. We've already been doing it anyway, and that's what last night's reading was talking about. It was like, and then today's daily reading too, um, the pick a card reading on uh, TikTok and our shorts and and uh, Instagram it was like pointing out that all the work that we've been doing um, has actually started to take root and it's starting to make a difference. It's like when Jesus said the wise man builds his house upon the rock, we've built our consciousness and our house and our values and our, you know, our world on fulfillment from a, a consistent place, from a space of having healed our hearts and we connect to the creator and we feel that source of comfort and security and provision. And so because we have realized that that is where we get our true fulfillment, we've actually started to cultivate actual, legitimate, sustaining, a sustaining sense of well-being like a level of faith that can't be taken away. It's not to say we're never gonna be upset or thrown off again, but like there is a different level of serenity and peace that we've arrived at. And I think that over the last couple of days, I've heard others talking about it and I've been feeling it too. It's just like this disembodied well-being. I think I was talking about it the other night with me and my, my um, nephew, we were talking about it at work. This like kind of disembodied feeling of like, everything's gonna be okay. Like, is everything okay? And that's the energy. If you can feel it already, that's that's that a taste of that energy that we're connecting to. So we want to lean in. And the more that we can offload our old lousy negativity and our like limiting beliefs and our self-sabotage and like our insecurity and our self-criticism, the more we can like offload all of that, the more that we're going to be filled with this sense of fulfillment and well-being which makes us more magnetic, which gives us more affinity with the light of the creator, which connects us with our blessings, with that flow of grace. So now is a great time to get ruminate in your wish, in your prayer, in your manifestation, and take action towards making that thing happen and be in a state of joy and thanksgiving and gladness and declare this as much as you can out loud with your mouth. I've started to pray out loud. Like I already pray on my jogs and I do like affirmations, but it's mostly get geared or centered towards the, man the um, affirmations. But over the past week, I've started to pray more specifically about things in my life throughout the rest of the run instead of just going into like a dreamy space where I'm visualizing. 
I've really started to use that, um, that power of praying out loud verbally. And I feel like it's really great when you're running because you've got your endorphins up and you're feeling good and you've got your music on and you're in a good headspace and you're feeling optimistic and empowered and confident. So that is a very powerful um, energy through from which to pray, um, especially if you're praying for things that you want to call in and pray for other people's healing as well when you're in that space. <clears throat> All right, you guys. We've got soulmate relationship coming up. The uh, A new romance with a spiritual basis is here for you now. So this is great. Maybe we are like, because of the work that we've been doing, we're beginning to be more prepared to have a more stable and healthy and deeper and richer level of relationship. In Kabbalah, I think it's in Kabbalah too where we learn about relationship dynamics and proactive confrontation and all the, the things that how we interrelate with one another. And so we learned that there are like four levels of relationships, like romantic relationships that you can get into. And they go as follows. A first mate is like light dating it's surface, it's not deep, there's no deep connection, um, there's no real uh, relationship happening. It's just like, oh, you're seeing someone, you're talking to someone, you know, you might um, see each other for a little while, but there's no real commitment or devotion. There's not like building happening, it's just, it's just dating. Then there is did I say, okay, so that was practice mate or for, no, first mates are dating. Practice mate is when you, it's like you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or whatever. And it's like you're, you have a relationship, but it's not necessarily a relationship that is like going deep and, and going the distance, right? It's just like, these are the, these are the relationships where it's more than dating, we learn how to have relationships within the practice mates. That's why it's called practice mates. It sets you up to be able to go deep enough to be vulnerable and exposed to someone where your shit comes up. And those, those relationships are um, even more mature than the practice mates. Those are called tikkun mates. And so in Judaism, um, the Hebrew version of karma is called tikkun. And our tikkun basically is from, for a lack of a better way to like just explain it quickly, your soul comes to earth with a soul contract. And you, you already know who your parents are gonna be, where you're going to live, we're gonna be born, we're gonna grow up. The people who are closest to you, like the most significant best friends, siblings, like the big relationships that make a big difference. It's like all these poignant characters and players in your life, they're already all worked out. And everything is set so that it gives you the space for the optimal unfoldment of your soul. You're going to be challenged in all the ways that trigger your weaknesses you're going to be given opportunities to develop your talents and skills so that you can share them with the world. And so there's these different dimensions of consciousness which within each every human soul. And this is mirrors the 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 levels of dimensions of the godhead which make up god. And it also mirrors um, the dimensions of existence within reality. It's all like these mirrored like things. And so tikkun, there's like these balancing factors within ourselves. There's these dimensions are like there's spaces of consciousness and levels of consciousness. And when they're out of balance, they can be vices. But when they're in balance, they're virtuous. And so part of our soul's contract, the way that we're triggered and the way that we're enhanced, it's all so that we can 
come into balance within balance these vices and these virtues and we can be the ultimate expression of our highest self our highest level of personality without the ego like tainting us so throughout every life, we take the same soul with us and it keeps going through these different levels of testing and growth and transcendence and evolution. And we keep taking our tikkun with us like lifetime after lifetime, trying to correct from past lifetimes, trying to continue the transcendence and continuing to elevate through lifetime after lifetime. So <clears throat> the tikkun mate are the people who bring up all of your shit so you can work on it. In different circles, these might be, you might have heard of a karmic relationship, right? Or a plutonic relationship where things have, there's, there's conflict. You, this person brings out your insecurity. Um, it doesn't mean that it's a healthy, okay relationship. It just means that this, these are the relationships that give you the friction that brings the darkness out in you so that it can be seen and healed if that's what you choose to do. These relationships can be more tumultuous, but they don't necessarily have to be. Maybe you're not like a person that fights a lot and maybe you're not very self-destructive. Maybe you don't do a lot of um, things that cause a lot of damage in relationships, but that doesn't mean that just because you have what seems like a peaceful relationship that there isn't tikkun coming up. You know, maybe your tikkun is that you hold everything in and you're not confrontational enough. So maybe that relationship was there to show you how to love yourself enough to speak up for what your needs, right? Or to have enough courage to rock the boat a little bit and and disagree with someone, right? So it can be different things for everyone, but these are the, the relationships where we like learn those big lessons that prepare us for the ability to have a soulmate level relationship. Now this takes a lot of the pressure off because this isn't telling you that you, there's one person that you're going to hopefully cross paths with and this is the one person that you could really be happy with and that this is, you know, everybody else is gonna pale in comparison. It's like, no, there's, there's many people out there that you could have a soulmate level relationship with and be compatible and have a great time and have attraction and, and have it all with, right? but it's the level of the relationship that we want to aspire to and merit. So we're doing the inner work. We are doing the tikkun correction. We're learning how to have relationship skills. We're learning how to communicate. We're learning how to be more vulnerable and we're learning how to create intimacy and communicate and all of those things so that we can finally maybe arrive at a soulmate relationship. Now, this is a relationship where you meet someone who is number one, mutually enthusiastic about being in a relationship with you also. This will never be an unrequited, oh, I hope it works out kind of thing. This is gonna be someone who feels the same way about you. You're going to be equally yoked meaning you have equal like wit and wisdom and understanding and depth and you're you're like you stand shoulder to shoulder you're like a, you're like an equal with that person on multiple levels and together you're complete on your own and you know that and you've done a similar level of healing on yourselves you still have a way to go because the soulmate person is it's they're going to bring you a deep level of fulfillment but they're also going to challenge you. It's not going to, no, no relationship's ever going to be perfect, but this is a situation where two equal individuals come together with an equal passion to make it work together. And they want to do life together. They want to grow together. They want to build together. And because they are whole on their own, when they come together, they enhance one another's life. And because they are um, more together than they are separate, it's like their love and their relationship even adds positivity to their surrounding community as well. So I'm not saying that we're gonna meet our soulmate this week, but I will say this, that we're probably getting closer to being at, in a space where we have the capacity to have a soulmate relationship without maybe sabotaging the same way we might have in the past 
right? Like this new love cycle that we're coming up on is going to be a different level than what we've been working at before. And and maybe before we were all like, okay, I'm in a tacoon, I'm in tacoon world. It's horrible. It's so, so much friction. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, maybe we're, we're getting closer to a more harmonious and equal and, uh, and definitely mutual love. So we have alchemy here, which reinforces what we were talking about with make a wish. It's that the more we're willing to dig deep and, and expose that darkness, expose that negativity, and really like seek to transform it, then that alchemy is, is releasing all of this miracle juice that we can then redirect into blessings that are going to be coming in. So you have the Midas touch right now and every project turns to gold. So there's extra magical energy surrounding you right now. There's, you've done, we've been doing so much work to heal and to grow and to change. And, and not that we thought we were wrong or um, bad or like not right. It's just that we're all here as souls with a purpose on earth to do this healing work, this soul correction, this balancing of ourselves. So our imperfection is perfectly great. Like we don't have to feel bad about that or guilty or shameful or wrong or like we're inherently like not good, right? It's the whole reason why there's an earth. It's the whole reason why we're here. We wouldn't have a physical body if we were like perfect and we didn't have anything to heal and work on. That's the only reason why there is an earth. <laughs> so don't bemoan your uh, flaws and your shortcomings. You can accept them and embrace them. They're yours. They're yours. <laughs> They're not anyone else's. And so you wouldn't want anyone else's. That is too much. It's on them. Let them have their problems and you love your problems. And you have a good time in the journey of self-discovery and elevation, right? It's not like we're racing to any finish line. We're just meandering through, but the more that we do this deep inner work, the more fulfilled we will feel, the more peace we will have. And literally, like we are taking raw energy and breaking it open and deconstructing it so that it can be repurposed into like magic sauce, essentially. So very exciting making us extra magnetic and extra attractive to possibly call in that soulmate. So don't, don't be afraid to talk to that cutie in the, in the bread uh, department at the grocery store. Oh, is that a hollow loaf you're buying? Yeah. I love buying the hollow loaf on Friday. I'm like, I'm always like, is there any Jewish guys here at Kroger today? I'm, I'm buying a hollow loaf. Look at a good, good Jewish girl on Friday night. Um, there's like no Jewish people in Nashville. <laughs> there might be. Um, I don't really know any of them. I know there's like a couple of Jewish people that I work with, but they're not like active or practicing. I'm far more enthusiastic than they are. And I'm just like self-taught and half Gentile. So. <laughs> uh, we do what we can. All right. So extra magical energy, make a wish. And the more that we heal the more magic surrounds us. Uh, I, I just want to reemphasize that when we talk about healing, it's like it's hard to find language that doesn't sound like you're healing. You know, we have wounds, right? We're healing. But like so many times this is triggering to people and they're like, well, I'm not wounded. I'm just perfect. And and, you know, we, we're all just fine the way we are. And I think that that can lean into like, like toxic positivity. Like you're not being realistic. Like there's no one on earth that goes through life without any trauma, any wounding, and you have no ego and you're totally un like, so totally selfless. And you've only known selfless people that never made you question yourself or like feel insecure. You've never done anything that's like self-destructive or wrong. <laughs> Or like, 
<laughs> shady or, or just like unsavory. You never, you never acted that way at all. So it's like, okay, let's be realistic, right? And they're just, this is the language that describes what's going on. I feel like the best we can say correcting, we can say balancing, we can say healing. But the, but the point is, is that we should never feel carry guilt and shame about it. It's not, we're not bad. We're not evil. We're not corrupt and we're not ruined. We're not trash. God don't make trash, right? So I, I think that so many people who come from Christian backgrounds carry a lot of guilt and shame. And it's not because of Jesus. It's not Jesus's fault. It's not Christ's fault. It's the fact that humankind took the message and ran with it. And we had all of our baggage that we then threw on top of it all. And then the power struggles that, you know, used this re religion to forward their own um, agenda, right? And to get people under their, under their control and under their influence. And so the projection of guilt and shame was never something that was supposed to be built in. We're supposed to be letting that go. That is an opponent's lie. That's a trick of the opponent to make us feel guilty, to make us feel shame. Remorse, atonement, that those things are healthy. Repent, repentance, right? You feel, I feel remorse. I feel sorry for doing this. That's great. And then you can correct and you can change and you can see where your mistake was. But feeling like you don't deserve and you're not worthy and all of that, it's like those are the kind of emotions that we were never supposed to carry around. And I think that those are the kinds of emotions that keep people from wanting to learn about Jesus or become a Christian or get closer to God because they don't want to be, they don't want to voluntarily do something that they believe and they perceive is all about guilt and shame, which is understandable, but that's never what it was supposed to be. And so we need to, when we see our darkness and when we see like our selfishness or our laziness or our lustfulness or our covetousness or whatever it is, it's like we need to, instead of getting uncomfortable and wanting to look away or wanting to anesthetize with substances or watch TV instead or go shopping or get on the dating app, you know, instead of trying to distract ourselves or avoid it or, oh my God, I've got to hurry up and change this about myself and like fix it immediately and I've got to fix everything around it that it affected. Oh my God, like so just so urgent. Like instead of being reactive, just observe. And be like, oh, yeah, wow, that was, that's a, that was me. I'm owning it, and all there, there it is, in all its glory. There's my negativity. I've been, I've had paranoia this week. I've had, <laughs> I've had thoughts of absolute annihilation and doom. Like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm ruined. You know, like all of these things. You're just like, ah, let it go, let it go. But laugh about it. It's like, oh my gosh, there it is. There's my paranoia. Wow. <laughs> like one day at work, my coworker, something happened. And I was like, oh, my chair. Like we have to go grab chairs from this area, bring them out and like set up different amounts of chairs every day. So it's like a laborious task. And I had set my chairs at my table and I turned around and like one of my chairs was missing and it looked like my neighbor, my coworker next to me had taken my chair to put it at his table. I was like, Hey, you took my chair. <laughs> I was, it was like kindergarten. It was like five years old. I was like, Hey, you took my chair. And he was like, no, I didn't. And I was like, Oh, there it is. I thought that a different coworker had taken it over there to sit during the meeting. And I was like, okay, go. I, went, I just went straight to attacking you and blaming you. I was like, that's so paranoid. But I just immediately like, just like called myself out at that moment and laughed and owned it. And we had a laugh and we moved on. But when we can see our darkness, that's what we need to, we need to just be like, oh my gosh, silly me. Wow. But like really, really let it change you. There's also an element of like letting 
the challenges that have been plaguing you and like just lording over you and hanging like a dark cloud over it's like those serve to break us but like in a positive way like when we're like oh my gosh I cannot do this on my own I'm like I'm nothing without the creator I'm, I'm, everything I do it's absolutely futile futile like I can't stand my own darkness anymore I can't live with my own impatience I can't go another day being a procrastinator who's frozen in indecision and uncertainty. I can't do it. It's like you have to be broken. Something has to just completely break you sometimes so that you let go of your white knuckled grip on control and your ego agenda and you let the universe come in and you let God move through the situation and let things expand. And sometimes parts and pieces have to be moved and sometimes things have to be moved out of the way. And sometimes it shakes you to your core because everything's uncertain and you don't know what's happening. But you just have to trust and let go and believe that it's all coming together for your highest good. Okay. Wow, this is becoming a long episode. Protection. I love seeing this. Consultant expert. So... This is such a good feeling to get because in the midst of the Omer and all of these challenging weeks that we've been in, which by the way, we are rounding out. I think this is the last few days of the Omer. In fact, maybe Shevayot uh, is like the grand finale, but I'm pretty sure we're, we're coming to the end of it. This is our last week. And all of these challenges hopefully have served to break you on some level to where you have looked at yourself deeper and been able to discover something that was holding you back and you've been able to release it. And so now we have arrived at having been broken, having been challenged, having been, you know, releasing things. It's like now we're finally starting to feel like we're lightening up, like things are, are feeling good again. But it's like the universe, like even tonight, I've been having like waves of just like, is everything okay? Because like once you have, like me and my nephew were talking about, like once you have that disembodied sense of well-being and oh my gosh, everything's great. Like I feel really good. And I don't know why, but like I'm just joyous for no reason. And the enemy, the opponent, is going to come in and be like, oh, this is awesome. I can totally knock them off their, off their high horse, off their good time. And so the fear will creep in. The paranoia, the, oh my God, I let my guard down for one minute and had a joyous moment without hypervigilance. Oh no, I'm ruined. I'm doomed. The rug will be ripped out. Something is like ominous. It's just waiting for me around the corner. I can already tell. Like it doesn't, it's not real. It's just an illusion. It's all smoke and mirrors. In fact, probably the, the big challenging scary that's been happening to you over the last seven weeks is probably all smoke and mirrors. And probably the moment that it is not an issue for you in your consciousness anymore that you're just like, you know what? I can't worry about this thing anymore. I know it's going to be okay. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to choose certainty. It'll probably all just dissipate like it was never there. Like once a year, I will have a vague health scary come up where like some pain will arise in some weird area where I'm like, oh my God, like this is it. I just know it. Or like this past year, I thought that I had a mouthful of cavities and I don't think that I do anymore. And it's just like, it's every year I have something that will test me to see if I will get scared and get reactive and then go spend a bunch of money and panic and have a meltdown. And then it, and it, like, if I don't, it never, like nothing results of it. And if I do go, go like have a, a doctor's appointment or whatever and follow up, it's never anything. It's like every year, it's just that same test coming back again and again and again. It's like, are you going to get scared? Are you going to, are you going to freak out? Are you just going to, are you going to go straight to like doom, <laughs> absolute annihilation in your mind? Or have you come further from last year? And it's like, okay. We're protected. All of this fear is smoke and mirrors. It's just a simulation, an exercise to grow your confidence in the creator, to grow your certainty in the creator, to grow that muscle to choose certainty, even when you don't feel it. 
right? It, it's a choice that we get to choose. It doesn't have to be something that we genuinely feel in the moment. We can totally fake it and that counts. It's like, okay, it's my choice though. I know I feel really disrupted and I know my thoughts are plaguing me with nightmares, but I have a choice. I am not my thoughts and I am not my feelings and I can separate from them because I'm already separated from them and observing them now. And me, the observer, is choosing certainty. Even if me, the other me, feeling everything right now is not feeling certain, it doesn't matter. I can choose certainty and I can choose to cling to the thoughts that give me hope and I can choose to cling to the thoughts that give me rest in trust and I can choose the thoughts that nourish me and start to help me feel lighter and better. And it's crazy how you can start off feeling completely terrified, but when you continue to hold on and cleave to those thoughts and choose them and it, like ingrain them into yourself, you really do start feeling better and your situation lightens up and lo and behold, you'll get a phone call. Oh my gosh, here's an opportunity to make some money or Hey, here's this thing you were worried about, or, oh, I know you needed this. Here's that. There you go. You know, it's funny. I've been this past, gosh, maybe since September or October, I have been doing a little bit of the, of the sage diet. Um, and it's not sage like the food, but what am I, like a rabbi, like the, uh, I guess a rabbi diet, a sage diet, a Kabbalist diet, so to speak, where a lot of what I've been eating has been food that I have come by, that I have not had to buy, that the universe has provided me with. Now, it does help that I work at a restaurant, so I am around food, um, but this is this comes in different ways. And so it's just been a fun experiment. And some of the, the, the food that I've eaten has come from my own freezer because I had the presence of mind several months ago to like freeze my leftovers and that saved so much money. In fact, I didn't even, I was eating my freezer for like months and months and months. I think, I think I was able to eat my freezer for like six months. So, I mean, that's like only half a year's worth of groceries you're buying. Obviously, you've got to go get like coffee stuff and milk here and there and stuff. But like the bulk of it, I've hardly, I've, I've hardly been really having to buy like food food for a minute. And so when you trust the creator and when you're like, creator, I know you're my provider and I know you're going to show me this. The creator will show you. It's so funny. Um... So Chosen, the Chosen episode that I was watching last night, that's the last thing I'll say. The Sermon on the Mount, I, the thing that really stood out to me this time was that, you know, Jesus was like, don't be anxious about your life. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to put on your body, what you're going to wear. Worry about seeking the kingdom of heaven and cultivating that sense of fulfillment within you. God knows that you live in a world that requires you to have clothing and food and to show up and to present a certain way and to be able to provide for yourself and pay your bills. So that will be provided for you. Just relax and don't be anxious about it and do the work within. You know, you still have to show up and do your work and, and, and collect your paycheck. You can't just lay flaccidly for and wait for it to all happen to you. You've got to be proactive. Um, but you can do that from a state of bliss, from a state of rest inside where you're not completely vigilant and anxious and terrified. So, and, and having said that, I can't tell you how many pieces of designer clothing that I have manifested in my life that I have not paid for. I have closets full of beautiful clothes that I never had to buy. They may not fit me perfectly. <laughs> they may, you know, need a little like tuck here and there. Um, but I have a, a wardrobe that I love that I've hardly had to buy any of those pieces. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just saying that if you're open, if your heart is open, like you can be you and you recognize that God is providing for you, things can just fall out of thin air. 
Like it doesn't have to be, like it can be frivolous things. Like I wanted to try Jones Road Miracle Bomb. It's like this makeup thing for women, right? And God knows I, God knows women, you know, wear makeup. And God knows that I was looking for something to give me a little bit more, um, you know, glow and pizzazz. And I was like, oh, those, those look really great. I want to try those. And guess what? During the time that I was taking my mom to the doctor, she didn't know anything about the fact that I wanted to try those out. She kept ordering them and they kept being the wrong color for her. And so every time I'd go to take her to one of her appointments, she'd be like, this one still wasn't dark enough. Here, you can have it. I don't want it. She was like, it's not, it doesn't do anything on my, on my face. So I ended up getting like, already I have almost all the colors, literally the exact colors in the set that I wanted. And I never had to buy any of them. Oh, I also got a tube of the mascara. <laughs> Didn't have to buy any of it. See, it's because you... You can, when you let go and you trust and you start cultivating that fulfillment from within and you seek the, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, the earthly kingdom will follow. Um, it's like the, uh, the saying, I've heard Deepak Chopra say it. And I, I'm not sure if it's, I think it's something from Hinduism, but if you chase, don't chase money, chase wisdom and money will chase you. All right, you guys, we've got make a wish. We've got soulmate, we've got alchemy, and we have protection. You and your loved ones and your possessions are safe and protected by heaven. So don't be afraid of the smoke and mirrors right now. Just remember, it's a simulation. This is playing out for you to overcome something within yourself. And hopefully you will be able to pinpoint what that is as it's presenting. So don't be shy to look right at the triggers and look deeply into yourself while you're triggered. Don't look away. Don't anesthetize. Don't try to, to push it down or stop it. Just be with yourself until you can connect the dots of where it's coming from. All right, y'all, I will see you tomorrow for our midweek alchemy message where we will be taking a deeper look at the process of our work with the spiritual lessons this week and sort of like what that process is looking like. And I have a, a feeling it'll be a continuation of our discussion today. Eight. Oh, subscribe to the channel, like, share, comment. Um, yeah, things are growing, you guys. Uh, little by little, I'm starting to see little sparks and signs of life of like, growth and just slightly higher numbers on all the different platforms. So it feels like something is stirring. I'm hoping, I'm hoping for a big surge soon. So who knows, but you guys are certainly helping with your likes and your shares. The shares on Instagram reels have been making a huge difference. So anyone who's been sharing those Instagram reels, thank you so much. All right, y'all. See you tomorrow. Ciao.